This evening, I'm going to be showing you how to make a watercolor card. This video is very detailed for those individuals who are going to be helping make cards for Shepherd's Cove Hospice. Our caregivers will be receiving a Pamper Me package that includes four thank you cards. These cards are all handmade and I'm hoping that if you're local and you want to help, that you will do so. All you need to do is contact me using the email information down below. Please put Crafty Card Makers as your subject line so that I know your email is not spam. I will also be given one-on-one -on -one instruction on how to make these cards. If you do not have any card making materials at all, or have very few, then you will be given the following items that need to be returned to us. You're going to receive some watercolor brushes, a paper trimmer, a Versamark ink pad, a pair of scissors, a heat gun, an empty spray bottle for water, embossing powder, an anti-static tool, some glue and our tape, some stamps, and a stamp positioner, blank card bases, and coordinating envelopes, along with sentiment stamps or dies, such as this one. These are all thank you cards, so obviously they will be thank you. Once you receive these materials, you're going to want to organize them on your space in whatever way you see fit. You may also wish to have handy some paper towels and uh, just for quick cleanup and some baby wipes. This uh, sheet underneath me happens to be this pink um, mat that you see me using today is actually a Wilson um, silicone mat like it's used for baking. When you get your stamp positioning tool, it will not be this dirty. Um, but I do ask that you kind of keep it clean. If you need to, just take the whole thing and put it in the sink and wash it. Very easy to do. Lay it out and let it dry just like with anything else. First thing we're going to do is take our watercolor paper you will also be getting some coffee filters. Uh, this will enable us to conserve as much of our embossing powder as we can. It is getting very difficult to find embossing powder at all, especially clear detail powder, which is what we're going to be using today. To hold this image in place, I'm going to use a piece of low tack tape in this case this is what is known as washi tape uh, most kits will have either some washi tape or a magnet and you're just going to want to put some of this up toward the top of where you're going to be stamping i can almost guarantee that if you're participating in this project the stamp that you will stamp or stamps you will be rece receiving, I can almost guarantee you that the stamps or stamp that you're going to receive with your kit has already been used. However, should you find that you want to buy stamps of your own and make cards for other projects, this is what you're going to do. You're going to place your stamp with the rough side down. And you you can tell brand new stamps are really, really sticky. And that's really what we want. And so we're going to put this down. And 
And in this case, I'm gonna kind of center it. I'm gonna close my lid. Which picks up my stamp. I'm now gonna take my hand and rub it really firmly over the surface of the stamp. so that it will accept ink a little bit more readily. Now, using that anti-static bag I told you about earlier, I'm going to prep the surface so that when we put the embossing powder on there, it only goes where we want it to go. I do want to point out that your hand should be clean and free of any perfume or lotion because it will show. Okay, so we're going to get some, we're going to get our embossing ink out and stamp. If you get an embossing pad, and it looks like this one it has little boo-boos here. It's not exactly the cleanest it used to be when it was brand new. It really isn't going to matter, so don't worry about it. Don't fret. It will turn out well. And ink that stamp. Now with the Misty, you're going to close the lid. And you're going to press and hold for a count of five or six. And then move your hand and do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you're going to keep doing this until the entire image has been pressed down. Even if your stamp is well seasoned and loved, you're going to want to ink this up several times so that we absolutely know we're going to get a good impression. I'm going to continue inking the stamp up. We're going to want to do this at least three times. Other items that you may want for making your cards include some paper towels. Uh, Obvious reasons there, baby wipes, a bottle of clean water. You will, you will be provided some watercolors. Yours may or may not be used when you get them. Um, it's just according to how many folks uh, decide to help us. You're going to... Uh, if you don't want to use the cinnamon stamp, you can use a uh, sticker that just says uh, thank you on it. Now that that's stamped down, I'm going to gently lift this up. This is um, ultra fine detail clear embossing powder. And I'm going to pour that over my image. Once again, I have pre-treated this with an anti-static bag. And you're going to want to channel that embossing powder back into its container. The heat tool that you receive if you borrow one from me is going to have two settings. It's going to have a slow setting that just basically dries items and a hot setting which will set this embossing powder. The heat that we apply makes the powder melt so that it kind of acts like a dam to keep your watercolor into place. You're going to want to turn on your heat gun so that it preheats, and then you're going to be using that heat to melt this powder. I will mute the sound of the heat gun, but I will not speed through the process.
as you probably noticed, while I was heating this powder to melt it, I was tilting my paper back and forth and making sure that it was indeed set. You can tell if it's dry or not because it turns clear and you do not see any graininess. So for just a moment, I'm gonna put this aside and allow it to cool. Now, the watercolors that you will probably receive are going to be this Art Philosophy set. Um, this particular company is uh, the one who makes watercolors for Prima Marketing. So if you're familiar with a good set of watercolors, um, that is one to get. I'm going to start by getting my watercolors wet, just using a spray bottle. You don't want to be like way up here. You want to be kind of close and very gentle. I also put some watercolor. I also put some water down on my mat so that I can use it to mix my colors. You're going to want to remove your paint brushes from their uh, plastic. Um, if you received regular brushes. If not, then you're just going to want to use the water brushes that you're going to be provided instead. I have three sizes here. A large, a medium, and a small. These do not have water in the barrel. You don't really need water in the barrel. I am going to start with um, the medium size, which is this one right here. I'm just going to get my brush wet by placing it in that water. I like to start with my green first. You do not have to mix colors if you're not comfortable doing so. You can just find your favorite one. If you want a green that would be more inducive of what you find in nature, you're going to want to add a little yellow into it. If in doubt, you can use a piece of the watercolor paper that you're going to be given to test out your colors. So I'm just going to use a straight up and down motion, just like if you were coloring in a coloring book. And once you have the general, in this case, outline of the vines and the leaves done, you can go back with a little bit darker color and just add in a few highlights or darker colors, I guess, not really highlights. Now I'm going to go back and blend that darker color out into the lighter colors. just like that this particular flower i know you can't really see it right now is in fact a carnation and i am going to be choosing to make my carnation in shades of uh, pink if you only have one water brush or one paint brush, then you can use a baby wipe to clean it in between colors. You don't need water on your desk to spill. You're just going to want to take your brush into a big old wad of baby wipes or damp paper towels and scrub it off until it's clean. If it's stubborn, spray it with water and clean it that way. 
even if the color on the tip of your marker is still kind of green or whatever color it just you just used you don't need to worry about it it's not going to transfer but to be extra sure you can always take and pinch your brush between your fingers in that baby wipe and really get between those bristles to make sure it's clean Water brushes are not expensive. You can use your coupon and buy them at your big box store like Hobby Lobby, Michaels, or Joann's, those type of places. I am going to pick up a couple of pinks. This light pink here and this kind of medium pink. We're going to start with our light. And I'm going to just add a little bit of water from that blop that I have up there. And using circular motions because when it dries, these brush strokes may uh, show back through. And you want it to look like a true watercolor piece. Now, I'm just going to wait a few seconds for this to cool off. You can also pick it up and just kind of give it a wave. And this is where I'm going to come in with the other two darker pinks to add a little bit more depth to this piece. If you have your brush too wet, just kind of smudge it off on the side. You can always use that color again later. So this is what it looks like right now. I'm going to put my brush back into the water and get most of that darker color out and smooch it off to the side.
Anywhere you think that this would naturally be darker, you're going to come back in and add some darker colors. Okay, now that this has cooled off, we're just gonna take, in this case, one of our coffee filters. You can use a um, soft cloth, doesn't matter, but what we're gonna do is just put our fingers in it, and just like you would buff a piece of silver or buff a piece of anything, we're going to gently rub this It must be absolutely dry. If it's not, it will smear and you will ruin that hard work you just put into this. What this does is it removes any ink that is sitting on top of that embossing powder and it will um, allow that embossing powder in this case to resist the watercolor and show more detail in the piece as you can see so now we're going to make our card first thing we want to do is to stamp our sentiment you will um receive some black ink of some kind to do this with or you can also just um, stamp it emboss it and then use some watercolor over the top of it and buff it off you're going to look at your stamp after you've inked it up and be sure there's no ink on the edges because if there is any ink it will transfer to your project and that won't be pretty if there is ink, just wipe that off with your finger. Decide where you want your sentiment to be. And just push it straight down, hold it for a second, and pull it up. Perfect. Now, if you have chosen to borrow a die cutting machine, you would die cut this image to fit your car front. For t the purposes of today's video,
we're going to first take a piece of cardstock that coordinates well with our project. This really fun kind of cranberry color is what we're going to use today. We're going to cut this to five and three eighths by four and an eighth. Line that up. You're going to want to push this down and towards the gate this way so that the paper doesn't slip. Now we're going to turn it and cut it at four and an eighth. Now, the first thing we're going to do for our, the panel we just finished is we're going to cut it down just a little bit. So our first measurement is going to be 4 inches wide by 5 and a quarter tall. This actually is pretty close. There is a little goober right here, so I'm just going to cut that off. Now we can cut it to the five and a quarter. It's actually a little bit smaller than five and a quarter. That is five and a quarter. Okay, I did not realize when I cut this that I was dragging my trimmer through some wet watercolor paper. But as you can see, I was able to clean that up just by taking my fairly wet baby wipe, holding it over the area that uh, was accidentally watercolored on and picked up that color. You're gonna wanna take your watercolor base and you're gonna wanna fold it towards the embossed area so that the factory score is inside the card. This keeps it nice and strong. And you're going to score that. To attach it to your card base, you're going to either want to use some glue or some tape. In this case, we're going to use glue. Once you get the glue on there, you're going to want to hold this into place. The glue will set up in about a minute. But it does give you a little bit of time to wiggle it around should you not have it perfectly straight. Now I have got glue on this panel as well. And to keep it from oozing out and making a mess, I'm just gonna use the tools God gave me and spread that glue out. And when you have four, you're going to stack them together with their envelopes and use a piece of ribbon or twine to uh, tie them off. And when they're all bundled together, they'll look something like this finished stack that I made earlier. Obviously, this is a little bit different style than what I showed on camera. If you have any questions, send them to me in an email. You can also um, send me a Facebook message. And I will get back to you once again. Please put... 
crafty card makers in your video so that I know that uh, it is from you. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please share it on your social media. Give me a thumbs up. Have a great evening, everyone. Stay happy and be a blessing. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.